Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Matt Williamson of Pop Goes the 60s, and I've got a special treat for you today. We're interviewing the flirtations, and I did a video on this channel a couple months ago, and many of you were introduced to them for the first time, and many of you were big fans of them already. So welcome, flirtations. Hi. Hello. Hello, everybody. From left to right, we've got Shirley, Ernie, and Vi. Hi. Yes. And they are the infamous or famous flirtations. There's a lot to talk about because you became big in England, really. And you've lived there ever since the 60s. So that's where you're, we're call, you're calling from now. And you've been there ever since. Is that right? That's, that's correct. correct. Yeah. Yes. 1967, I think. 66, 67. Mm -hmm. Okay. And let's, because your humble beginnings began in the South. And you started singing like a lot of people do. I suppose it was a gospel background. And and then you, you slowly built up uh, a group with one of your other sisters. And yes. then and that was a group called the Gypsies. That's correct. Yes. And, and what was it like starting a band in the 60s at that time? Especially you made your way to New York. How, how are the steps? What steps did you take to get from South Carolina to New York? Well, we moved from South Carolina when I was a little person. So Shirley and I were just small people. The family moved from the South to New York. We weren't thinking much about singing then, but that came later, uh, going to church in uh, New York itself. And um, uh, for me, it was uh, Aretha Franklin. I saw Aretha Franklin and um, um, uh, Mahalia Jackson singing. Mm. And I thought, whoa, this is something that one needs to do. You know, so uh, that that's when my buzz started for singing, you know. Although I enjoyed singing in the church, you know, because it's a different sort of feel when you're doing gospel to singing soul, you know. But um, uh, I knew I wanted to be a singer from that time. But uh, I think I was about maybe, I don't know, 13, 12, 13, maybe 14. And we got our little group together. You, know? well, you had mentioned the differences between singing gospel and soul. I would be kind of interested to know how you differentiate those. Uh, I don't know. Gospel is more... Uh, you feel it, you, uh, you, it's a different feeling inside your body when you're singing for God. If, I don't know how to explain that, but um, it's a different feeling. When you're singing uh, love music, you're thinking about a person, you know, a, a relationship, that sort of thing. So mm -hmm. that's the difference for me. It's um, singing for God is certainly different than singing for an audience. You know, it's just, it's, it's, it's a different feeling in mm -hmm. the body. Well, you know, people that go to church, uh, they dance in the church all the time, so we could easily swap that. Back yeah, but when, when it first started, when you know, back in the day, they weren't doing no dancing. Well, they were, but they yeah. were like they were like happy dance. Yeah, yeah, clapping yeah. your mm -hmm. hands, and but that's it, what they did all yeah. the time. But it was still a different feeling to sing yeah, well, secular is, music. Yeah, well, I would say. The, the, the lyric content, I think. Oh yeah, just, yeah, just Sing, yeah, yeah, singing yeah. to God and about God. Yeah. And, what he can do for you is certainly different to love the one you're with. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> but God says that love the one you're with. Yeah, I don't like that. Not like that. Not with that feeling. Well, not like that. Yes. <laughs> not with that feeling. Of, we, we were love, brought up the, we brought up the, you know, the church music was different from um, the music. Secular that you, music. Yeah, 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 absolutely. That type yes. of music. So that's the yeah, way. Yeah, because I mean, bumping and grinding, love the one you're with. You can't go over that. that. <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly like, like oh. Um, um, I walked one day along the country road and lo, a stranger journey to take up your cross and follow me. That's completely different. Love the one you win. So you well, know, you but nobody actually just do all <laughs> green eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Love the one you win. That's all no, I know. We have, never, okay. we, have, we have never been singing like that. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, Matt. Carry on. Oh, oh, that's okay. No, I love it. Well, the 60s was a time when I guess we went away from the religious music and, and, and pop music became so big, which was largely secular. And yeah. we I know that you guys were big fans of the Beatles. Can you tell me how they influenced you and what they did for your career? Well, ha, I, I came in contact and, and of knowing the Beatles when I lived in Alabama. And they came to America and did the Ed Sullivan show. Mm -hmm. Who was wonderful. And, and without having to say anything, I just let rip, you know, that I love them and they're great and they're wonderful. My mother said, girl, you better sit down. I'm like, oh, mama, I'm like this man. 
Anyway, so we got through that night, but it started my musical history yeah, from that yeah. point on. So mm -hmm. everything that came on that was different that I wasn't accustomed to, I would make sure that I would pull it up. And Yeah, so and she do. was in Alabama thinking about the Beatles. We were in New York thinking about the Beatles, not even knowing that eventually the three of us would be together, together saying, wow, wouldn't you like to go to London? Yes. You like the Beatles? Oh, yes. You know, it's amazing mm -hmm. how things come together, you know, so. Yeah. It will be. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know if they did much for our career, but I mean, we liked their sound and we knew we wanted to visit this country. And, um, but whether, uh, as far as our career is concerned, I don't know. <laughs> it, it, they might do something for our career if we can ever get this um, new album released because we've done one of their songs, you know, oh. so they might. I mean, all the Beatles and I there, but Paul McCartney might think, oh my goodness, that was flirtation. I never heard of them. But they say, no, he's song. wonderful. He adores us. Yeah. Yes. Does he? Yeah. He, if we can get this track for him to yeah. hear, the Beatles might help our career. You yeah. know? You never know. You right? never know. Mm -hmm. Well, that's Go very on. interesting. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that you have something new coming out. Yes. Oh, God. Yes. Yeah. A whole album. Talk about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, he'll get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Vi, you had mentioned, you know, being from Alabama and you saw Sullivan in 64. I was always curious, what do what did the black audience in the South, how do they respond to the Beatles? Because that's something that is, doesn't get talked about. We, we know about the Beatles. They didn't really like playing to segregated audiences, but I wasn't quite sure how the, the Deep South really accepted them if they really liked them if because the Beatles were influenced by quite a lot of black music what was yeah. what was the feeling down there and with black audiences about the Beatles wonderful they could they could say yeah and that was the most important thing but it's not where you live and who, who you live next door to and what songs are you going to do and blah 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 they could they could sing and they wrote beautiful lyrics yeah no, I suppose and, that a, a lot of people didn't even have television so they didn't know what they looked like they just heard the sound you mm -hmm. know, so um, mm -hmm. well, until that they saw them. Randy Reckermall yeah. at that time. You remember that uh, late night uh, show about three times a week? Randy Reckermall. No, I don't but remember that. Alabama. Yeah, no, he was too young. Yeah. And yeah. Saw, they did some of the same music. What was his name? The same Go Daddy Go. Um, uh, oh, darling, I can't remember. The tall that. guy. Played the guitar. Oh, uh, um. <laughs> Uh, because Chuck they, Berry? Chuck yeah, they did some of the, the, his music and a lot of other people's music like that, which was uh, what they liked, you know. Who, the Beatles? Yeah. Hmm. Fine. Well, I'm going to talk to George about that. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been one of the nights I missed. <laughs> no, no, so no. That, well, I, don't, I would say because they had a lot of soul, the way they sung, that uh, uh, no matter where you were from, Deep South, wherever, they could relate to that, you know. So. Yeah, I like, I like, I like their content of the lyric content. Yeah, that the so, I like the shaking of the head. Yeah. Okay, they had hair in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, very good. So, before you moved to England, which was roughly 1967, I know that you had uh, some relations, at least starting up with Motown. And that didn't happen. Was that, did they turn you down or did you, you turn them down? It must have been, I mean, there were so many girl groups at the time. How are you trying to stand out? Well, we weren't, we didn't think we'd be able to. That's why we didn't go with Motown for that audition because, um, I mean, they had so many artists and um, we knew that if we went with Motown, we'd probably be, still be sitting on a shelf somewhere. So. Uh, that's when we decided to maybe try our luck where the Beatles were from. Mm -hmm. So it was all during that time we were having, you know, we had to think about things because, I mean, the business was changing and we had all this girl singers and it, it's it's hard for females anyway. So we needed to find a way that we could stand out. And then it came back to the Beatles. Oh, my, look, maybe we'll go to England. And when we got here, we found out there weren't any girl groups here just another group called, I think, the Paper Dolls and ourselves. So that was better for us. We made the right decision, you know? So you stood out in England. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. and I know this, uh, it's a little more new to me, but here in America, we're not too, we don't know too much about this Northern Soul movement that you fit right into. 
And I think 67 was about the time it really kicked in. Uh, were mm -hmm. you aware of that at all in the clubs? I no, no idea what Northern Soul was um, until years later. Um, we found out that we were really popular on Northern Soul. Now, uh, we had played some of the clubs. Uh, Wigan Casino was the big club that would have all the artists. They'd bring artists over from America. And um, I think it started with um, like B-sides of records. I mean, somebody would go over and bring back records and they'd play the B-side and they would um, start this little dance. And it's Northern, I think, because it's in the North and the soul came from the different tracks. Uh, they uh, played tracks that were different to the norm that would be on the radio. They seemed to like the the underdog kind of thing, the B-side, uh, that kind of thing. And mm -hmm. they built up this reputation, Northern Soul. And uh, we had no idea that we were popular in Northern Soul. Nothing but a heartache, um, Little Darling, uh, It's a Woman's World, all those songs were being Jerk played. It. Jerk it, yeah. We had no idea until one day we were doing a club up north and um, the audience I think it was an all-nighter because sometimes they'd have those things where you're there, you go on like two or three in the morning. And the audience, I mean, they stayed for two and three days to see the show. These people love their music. And if they love you, you're just, you're made forever, really. And because of Northern Soul, I think that's kept our career going. You know, mm -hmm. when they love you, they love you. And they really, you know, <clears throat> we've been very fortunate with the Northern Soul crowd. Yeah. And I also think too, because... That you know, we had very good uh, songwriters, producers when we first went into the studio, and I'm sure that Ernie would like to talk about Decca or Shirley, as far as that, as far as that concerned. But we were very, very, very fortunate that we have people that really wanted to do something different. Mm -hmm. You know, we wanted to do something different. That's why we landed here. And then, and the boys, they've had heard about America, but they were very big in Europe. Wayne, Wayne uh, and, and Tony Waterton. Waterton. Mm -hmm. They did a lot yeah. of started there's things in, in yeah. Germany. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I had Tony on a couple of weeks ago and I met him oh, for the first crazy. time and what a great guy. Um, we yeah. talked a little bit about the sound because when you guys started recording your first recordings over there, uh, I, I, to my ears, it's a unique sound. It doesn't sound American. It's this heavy bass sound. It's made for the dance floors. And I, and I just kind of asked him, did you plan that? And he said, well, not really. We just kind of allowed the musicians to do their thing. Mm -hmm. But, but I have to believe that Bickerton and Waddington, when they were younger and they just, they weren't corrupted by the old ways and they just did it their way to what sounded good to them. And that really seemed to work out with uh, your voices. Yes, and I think we got to give credit to um, Jenny Harris that's as well, right, the yeah. arranger, because that gentleman, he, the way he arranged nothing but a heartache, I mean, Brilliant. that intro now stands the test of time, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, he was a, an amazing arranger, so we have to give credit to him as well, because he, I think he helped to make the lyrics of Tony Waddington and Wayne Bickerton, you know? Yeah, certainly the the brass, particularly in that song, that intro, it just kicks it into overdrive from the get go, yes. and you know it just invites people onto the dance floor. So it gets it grabs your attention. I I can see your point where that was a really important hook of your some of your songs. Yes, yeah. yes. He was very good, and he made us feel very comfortable too. Coming from America back in the day, but. It was fantastic in the end. We loved being, get excited, going to the studio. Oh, yeah. and, the musicians just, were amazing. Absolutely oh, oh, amazing. God, we best. thought that only Americans could play bass <laughs> like Herbie Flowers, but mm -hmm. no, wrong. Yeah. There's good musicians everywhere, and yeah. these, these guys were amazing. Yeah. yeah, so we were very, very fortunate indeed. Well, that's why we ended up staying in Europe, mm -hmm. because it was so amazing that we could, we could find the Spanish, the Portuguese, the Germans, the Dutch, mm -hmm. the, the Belgian, the yeah, Belgians, yeah. yeah. whatever you call it. <laughs> yeah. and, but it was just, and, but they also made us feel welcome too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was not a question in the introduction. It was, I'm glad you're here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Made it feel special. So we were very, yeah. very, very lucky about that. Indeed, yeah. Now you had started to branch out, like you just said, all of Europe really accepted you. And I know that you began touring and the records were made in England, but you also, you had hits outside of England. Yeah, because we, we had, um, 
the wonderful, 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 wonderful Tony Prince and Dave Lee Travis. These were DJs that was in Europe, out, on the outskirts of Belgium. So naturally, they were familiar. They wanted anything that would get there the English name going forward, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. And rightly so, because they were very good. But they understood the music. That was, that, that was very important to us. And that's what made us so in love with Northern Soul, because it, it brought everything back to us. Mm, yeah. You know, you can affiliate yourself with that, yeah, with so, that music. Yeah, absolutely. The different countries, um, they embraced us in Belgium, Germany, Sweden. Spain, Portugal. Spain, Portugal, yeah. So mm -hmm. it was a it was a wonderful time um, to be in mu music business then you know mm -hmm. everything was new and new country and meeting new people it was just wonderful and a different way of life yeah absolutely yeah mm -hmm. so your breakout song which is nothing but a heartache that uh, is, is still popular today it's it's almost more popular now than it was you know maybe even twenty years ago. And mm. I, I let's just run through some statistics here. I know it's got over 10 million streams on Spotify. Yeah. I did some addition. It's 1.8 million views on YouTube. Uh, you've, there's been some re-releases of your material. Yes. And uh, I wish there was more material. But you you guys, <laughs> in 68, right around that time, you recorded that song basically was a, what they call a turntable hit. It was a hit in America. And uh, you recorded an album. So tell us about the the recording of that album what you expected it to do for you uh this is the sound like flirtations album yeah um we were young and excited and we just wanted to sing and they brought the stuff to us we sung it we were hoping for some sort of success um because we had left america and we hoped that things would work out for us here and um make us just as famous and popular as the Supremes and that sort of stuff. Um, so we had big expectations, but you know, you show business, you never know what's going to happen. So we went with uh, Tony Waddington and Wayne Bickerton and Decker in the hopes that things would work out for us. I mean, I can say that um, we did have um, a turntable hit with uh, Nothing But a Heartache, and then someone out there was very, very good as well. And uh, can't, stop loving you. can't Stop Loving You. And uh, yeah, it was. Uh, a great time and we worked a lot so we were working so often that mm. we didn't get a chance to do very much so going back to america when nothing but a heartache was doing its thing we couldn't do it because we had obligations here i mean in your interview when you said that um nothing but a heartache was um doing well in america and we were here in london we had no choice but to stay in london because mm. they weren't out of any contracts to go to america <laughs> so we missed that opportun opportunity to probably make things better for us in America. Uh, but we had to stay here and we just had to go along with whatever was happening. Management tied you up, that sort of thing. You know, you know how mm -hmm. it is. It's yeah. Go with the flow sometimes. So we we did that. And um we were grateful for what nothing what um sounds like the flirtations did, but it could have been bigger, like you said, had we been able to promote it in America, because you know when things happened in America, sort of bounces back over here. Kind of we thing. didn't have... But we did good, considering, really. Yeah, yeah we, we didn't have better. a management in, in America. We didn't no. have that. And I think that was our letdown, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. You know, because back in the day, everybody had a manager. Manager or a lawyer. No. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Do you have a lawyer? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need a lawyer. Uh, yeah, lawyer. Uh, so we did mostly everything ourselves, really. So... We made some mistakes because we didn't know, you know, we did the best we could. But uh, hey, there's still time, Matt, you know, mm -hmm. because we're just like these young 70 old people. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> you know, there's time for us. I know somebody's out there wanting this new I'm album. Waiting. Yeah, That's your this new one. album that uh, we just finished at Abbey Road Studios. Somebody wants to release that. I know it. Maybe even Paul McCartney might want to sing on it. You never know. You never oh. know. I talked about it. Yeah. My husband just popped yeah. in yeah. well, Can you give us any uh, any sneak preview of some of the tracks? You mentioned you're doing a Beatles song. Anything you can tell Ooh, us now beforehand? No, oh, secret. Secret, secret for now. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'd love to, but I mean, if uh, we can get a record deal, I'll make sure that you hear it first. first that you'll be the first I'll, one. I'll let you hear it before, you know, it, it's released. That's all I can Oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> 
And that's all I can promise. I'll let you hear it before it's released when we get this record deal. So let's push for this record deal. Okay. How long has this record been in the works? Uh, we finished not it not that long. We a few months, I'd say, ago. And we finished it. And it's finished. Two, three, four. And it, it's <laughs> it's it's um it's it's ready now. Um, you know, we had to make sure we did this album with a a gentleman called Ben Rice, who's an American producer. You see. And he he was brilliant. He was brilliant. He found us and he wanted to do these tracks. And um, we wrote some songs together. And you're going to love it, Matt. That's mm. all I can You're going to love it. <laughs> Very good. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing it. <laughs> now, have you, have you been performing at all recently? Uh, we did some things in Birmingham and we did some things in uh, Mallorca. Yeah, so, you know, we work periodically um when um, COVID. well covid is better now and they yeah, are getting yeah. back into you know um getting people to work for them so yeah we are willing to work now we were sort of slowing up and thinking well you know maybe we'll stop this thing but the album sounds so good so we think we're going to carry on for a while and see what happens yeah so we're open for working situations absolutely yeah mm -hmm. any any chance of getting you getting you over here to america Yes, Matt, if you thought that out, so like you said, we don't have a lawyer or a manager, mm -hmm. so we would need someone to hook that up for us, and we'd certainly be willing to do that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> America, we've never seen. That would be wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, when I think back and I was going over working on your video, I, I couldn't help but think how, how great you guys would have went over here, because uh, mm -hmm. in the late 60s, you know, Motown was changing and, and you know, yeah. black music was changing. Sly and the Family Stone came out. And it's really, yes. you've got the music before Sly and the Family Stone, the music after. And right. it seems like your music would have been uh, a good bridge for the both. And because it wasn't, it, it didn't sound like the Supremes. You sounded yeah. much more gritty. And like you said, a little more bump and grinding than the Supremes. They were pretty sugary by then and uh -huh. didn't offer that that edge that you had. Yeah, so yeah, I feel maybe it was like a missed opportunity, but you know, everything happens for a reason. Like I said, I mean, maybe it's going to be in 2023 and four. Mm -hmm. Was it meant to be in the 60s? Maybe it's meant to be 23, 24. I mean, we can still try and do these things, you know, but yeah, that would have been good. But I mean, like I said, commitment sometimes you have to go with what you have to go with. Who wants mm -hmm. to be sued, you know? So yeah. we had to do that. And, um, but all is possible still, you know, you never know. You yeah. never know. You'll get us to America. You never know. You might decide <laughs> to manage us. You know, who knows? <laughs> <That's bad. laughs> well, I'd give it a go. Yeah. I'd love to see you. Yeah. Um, so in the in the late 60s, when you did stay in Europe and were working, what was a normal work week? I mean, it seems like you must have worked nonstop for a long time. Oh. What was your work schedule like? And did you have downtimes oh. or? Oh my goodness, the downtime. Yeah, the downtime wasn't very was good. Traveling. Let me tell you, it was yeah, traveling. We, amazing. Yeah, we yeah. travel like a two like, gigs, two gigs a night. Two, yeah, two for shows a night. Seven days. We worked seven days. When we when we had a a, a free day, like maybe three weeks down the road, oh, that was a good day. You know, you mm. could rest and but then it was also very enjoyable as well, you know? I mean, when two shows a night, and now I couldn't do no two shows a night. But back then, it was really cool. You were saying different audiences, different people, different parts of the country. And the downside, I suppose, was the, the traveling in a car because those roads weren't very good, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. You know, trying to get to the place could take forever because, but uh, once you were there, it was all good, you know? I can do that now, but back then it was kind of cool. And uh, But we were really happy when we had a day off, let me tell you. Yeah, mm -hmm. so people made a lot of money off us. We didn't make the money, but they did. Let me tell you, mm -hmm. didn't they, Shirley? They certainly did. Yeah, they had us. We also made money as well. We made now, they not were, as much as them. They weren't horrible. They were yeah. really, very great to us. No, no, people were great to us. I'm yeah. talking about management stuff. They made loads of money. They had houses. We didn't have one. Oh, stop. Well, they, they got a thing inherited from their grandmother. Uh, I mean, stop. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Well, yeah. Uh, funny. yeah. This is a burning hour. <laughs> well the record record industry is not known for being very gracious to the artists you know they Absolutely. they 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 do pretty well of taking a sizable cut um Absolutely. and you know it's it's a shame that a lot of artists back then just didn't get they were paid like um 
just you know what would be wages you know you're you've paid for the performance but there wasn't any bigger payout or longer term publishing and a lot of people just didn't they made money at the time but it wasn't anything they could retire on that's for sure absolutely yeah yeah that is so true there's one guy yeah. that I I really like. I wanted to ask you if, you if you've ever heard of the American R&B singer Lou Courtney. Yeah. I, know, I know the name. Yeah, vaguely I remember that name. Yeah, he was a guy. He was a singer. He was a songwriter and came up and um, he he did a lot of singles himself. It was more of a northern soul type of guy as well, and just a single act. He eventually in the '70s joined the Fifth Dimension, but he was a guy that um, he just I had one of his records when I was a little kid and I always loved him. And I just was wondering if he's a good example of some of these just great R&B types that just never hit through the big time and had some yeah. records that were minor hits, but, you know, the management wasn't there. And and there was a lot, a lot of people were like that and d didn't do as well as you guys did. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's very, very difficult if you don't have the management and the people backing you. You know, you need, you need help. You can't do everything yourself. And um, it has to be someone that's really, really into what you're doing you know, and willing to work, you know, most people just want you to work and they collect. But um, mm -hmm. when you find someone that's for you, then it's easier, you know, so. Yeah, I, so yeah, we're still, look, we're still uh, looking and we will be looking next year too. Uh, and no, no, got the end. Got a, got a new look going on here. <laughs> yeah, I, I find that the bands, even the big bands that were had a lot of success, that they had management that actually cared for them. And yeah, the record company would have had to have some level of care for them and nurture them in some way. Because most people at that age, you're in your 20s. I mean, you, you don't know anything. And exactly. even the Beatles, you saw when Brian Epstein died, how things in their empire started to fall apart because they didn't have somebody at the top taking care of them and really looking out for their best interests. Yeah. There's only so yeah. much you can do as performers because you're performing as well. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. I can yes. see how that would be difficult. Mm. Yes, indeed. Wow. wow. I've got a question for you. Um, I know that you did quite a lot of recording, uh, you know, between 68 and 72, and you got one album out of it and a handful of singles. Are there other recordings that were not released that you did by, with Bickerton and Waddington at all? Or do we pretty much have everything you recorded? I think you have everything we recorded with Bickerton and Waddington. There might be some other stuff. Um with uh, I Love Makes the World Go Round, I think. Everything is on that as well. Okay. But there's, I mean, we did some high energy stuff back in the day and stuff when we were mm -hmm. thinking, uh, oh, let's just try anything. Nothing is happening. So there's probably some stuff that might be out there. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Maybe some li be. live stuff as well, perhaps? Uh, perhaps. It's just that... Um, uh, a lot of stuff got lost in moving, you know, you try and mm. keep these things together, but they don't always, it don't always pan out. So, I mean, yeah, there's, um, I think I have a few things like from the green room and stuff we did some years ago in the West End. So, yeah, I think there's a few things, not a lot, but a few. Most everything is online well, now anyway. And yeah, also so, on the road too. Yeah. And you did, you came off the stage and you in that car and you were yeah, gone. Yeah. So, so it, it was that kind of, Everybody's on the move. You're either going to a, a, another gig or another town for the following day. Mm. It was things. You're always busy. So we never had a board day, did we, Shirley? No. There's no. A, what, no. It's, it's, <laughs> Shirley didn't have a board day either, you see. As far as material is concerned, I think maybe um, there might be some things. People send stuff to you and that kind of thing. But uh, um, I'm not sure, Matt. I'll just have, mm. a, I'll have okay. a I'll let you know. I should have asked Tony that. I didn't think to ask exactly. him. You yeah, never know. Yeah. He, he might have yeah. some tapes under his bed. You never know. I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, happened exactly. before. I mean, I, I, I've yeah. been at this a long time and a lot of tapes get found that they're thought to be lost. And those yeah. things do have, they do turn up. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, now, yeah. now you got me thinking. I'm going to have to start looking around. There yeah. you go. <laughs> See. <laughs> in every cupboard you can get that going. <laughs> Well, when you guys were working so hard in the late 60s, early 70s, I know you toured with some pretty big names. Uh, the biggest probably Stevie Wonder. And that was a British. Was that a British tour or a European tour? What was that? A uh, British tour. British mm -hmm. tour. Well, yeah, uh, did we, we did a few things outside of Britain, I think. Which Stevie? Stevie Wonder, yeah. Mm -hmm. did we? No. no, that was a British tour. No. Yeah. 
Yeah. We, we, uh, we, we did with Tom, Tom Jones. Jones. Tom Jones. Tom Jones. We, uh, we went Tom outside. Yeah. Work in Paris, Germany yeah. and, and yeah. all those wonderful places. And yeah, that, that was... <laughs> That was really cool, actually. Nice. Mm -hmm. And Tom Jones recorded one of the songs that you had uh, recorded oh, on the album. Don't get me started. We <laughs> will. We will. Uh oh, uh oh, is that is that a did I uh, cross yes, into a I soft did. area here? Uh, that, I wish you would come back now, because um, getting back to that album I keep talking about. Um, there's a, a really nice song called "Don't Leave Those Memories Behind." That would he would make he would be good doing a duet with us, but. Uh, yeah, now is when we need him. Back then, we didn't need him doing Can't Stop hey. Loving You. You know, but, uh, you know, um, I, and I have to say, I think that ours was better. Ah. You know, I think I enjoyed ours better. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love Tom to death. He's a brilliant singer, but, you know, hey. It was a great, great, he turned out to be a really nice associate that we were working with. He wasn't pulling any straws, and I'm like, I'm Mr. Tom Jones. None of that. Oh, no, he was a nice man. He was really, yeah, really nice. Very, very yeah. nice man. So oh, come, cool. Tom, we got to do it for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you also uh, traveled with the Four Tops and the Temptations. The oh, Temptations yeah. have always been one of my favorites. Oh, uh, weren't they brilliant? I mean, oh yeah. Still, oh wow! I mean the harmonies, the routines, that that unusual microphone. I mean, oh, they were amazing, absolutely amazing. And there's what? none of them left. Yeah, well, no, yeah, true. that's true. But none of them are left. No groups, no routines. That's what I'm oh, all about. Oh, yeah, no. Nobody's routining. They're just right. singing. Well, they yeah. had the moves. I mean, they had the voices. Oh, yeah. They had the harmonies. And um, oh, yeah. one of Motown's great, great masterpiece groups were, were the Temptations. And uh, yes. Oh, yes. Couldn't yes. be the yeah. By the time uh, they were in uh, England for that tour, I think David Ruffin had already left the band and yeah. um, left the group, rather. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and uh, they started to make changes, and it had to change with the times too. And mm. they, they they were able to do that successfully. Oh yeah, by replacing uh, with people like uh, Dennis Edwards and stuff like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, they found the best singers, didn't they? Really? Yeah, you know? were the best singers. Yeah, Ron, yeah. To them, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th those were great. Oh, wonderful. Just I, I can feel the music now in me, you know, them singing and let, listen to the You were just and, about to do a routine. It was <laughs> <laughs> so that name was just about to jump up in concert. Yeah. Yeah, they, they were fab. They really were fab. Yeah. Mm. Oh, and since we're talking about Mota, I, I got I'm gonna have to ask your opinion of the Supremes just overall. I mean, it seems like you were you would have been a a, a rival of sorts had you been in the States. And if you record it on maybe another label, maybe you get signed to Stax or, or a more a different label. Um, what was your opinion of the Supremes? Well, I thought they were very good. But I thought we could be better. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they really were nice. They were, they were nice, great singers. But when you have a, a stable of people around you like they had, mm -hmm. how can you not be good? Yeah, going, I mean, going, to, going to dance school, going to learn yeah. harmonies, learning how yeah. to sing, have the walk to move. Yeah, yeah. We didn't have that, but we yeah. had the walk, Shirley. We oh, had oh, yeah. I still have it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me know that Shirley still have the that's, walk. That's why I'm quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They they had you know huge opportunities and. Um, that's still, I mean, that's why we left America, really, because even if we had gone with another record it, company, it would have to be up again. Yeah, up somebody again. who was going to be so for us that they would pull out the stops like they were doing for them at Motown, you see. And that wasn't going to happen, I don't think. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that was difficult, too. I mean, we only hear what they want you to hear in, in, in the press or direct from the company itself. But it was very hard for them too. Oh, they, yeah, I saw a documentary imagine. recently, and they were just saying how hard it was. And Barry, you know, how he was strong. I like the fact that he was very strong because that's what we need as artists. Sometimes somebody to pull us up by the coattail and, yeah. and go forward. But yeah, other than that, I have no, and I, and I say I have no regrets. I love coming to the UK mm -hmm. and I love having the opportunity to work here. And I don't know why the sisters are sitting with me on this couch. One is pulling my collar 
And the other one is doing something I don't know, but we'll leave it at that. Yeah, but, no, no, more. They, they were good. They, no, they were very yeah. good. I mean, well, they were. A good you role. had to be good. Good. Everybody role, had to be role good. Role model, mm. you know. They also um, made you think that okay, if they can do it, we can do it. That kind of thing, yeah. and um, yeah, so it was inspirational. I would, I would say, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. Motown was inspirational, and all their artists. I think they helped everybody who wanted to be in show business, knowing what they wanted to do with their lives, kind of thing. Very good. Yeah, I still, I mean, people still love the R and B and and Motown. Motown was a little more sanitized, I guess, and that's why they had such big hits. They were smoothed yeah. over quite a bit, and I think the Northern Soul was not smoothed over. They liked yeah. the, the the more. I guess the more rough and bump and grind, rough. rough and ready. Yeah, that's yeah. why it was so popular. And there's yeah. a strong contingent of people here in the states that, that like that as well. The more yeah. Aretha Franklin, the, the the more the deeper South, the blacker sound, which Motown didn't really give. That almost was for white audiences, but yeah. it still yeah. appealed to both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Aretha, that's she was my mentor. I mean, after hearing Aretha, I thought, whoa, how could you not want to sing after hearing that voice? She well, was amazing, absolutely amazing. And also, uh, speaking of the the Supremes, they had the best musicians. Mm -hmm. They had the best writers, big, big, big the designers for clothing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you had Dinah Ross, who just did everything that was needed to be as as an artist or a management company. She did everything that she had to do, and that was right to yeah, yeah. to have that success. Yeah. yeah, and we did all of ourselves. I mean, our yeah. outfits, we, we, we oh, designed them. We look right. good. Yeah, we did. Yeah. We designed yeah. them. We didn't have nobody. Yeah. I understand <laughs> you you did design quite a lot of your own outfits. That's yeah, really impressive. Yes, yeah. So we, we did most everything ourselves. But now, in 2023, with this new album I keep talking about, <laughs> we need some people to come together and we can sit back and let them say, do this, try that. And we just go along. Yeah, that would be cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's from her corner of the room. That's not from my corner. <laughs> resting time. Whoever's going to enter this 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 uh, amusement park is going to find that's not what we're talking about. <laughs> we just want to work hard. We, we want to work hard. We're not sh shy at coming forward. Yeah, we're working. But they will be the one getting it. We don't have to worry yeah, about it. We'll yeah, just say, oh, where where are we going? What time? Okay, cool. <laughs> you know, easy. Yes, easy is right. good now easy would be so good yeah well there, there is certainly a hunger for yeah. 60s and 70s artists because i mean there's and a lot of them are touring and obviously we had the yeah. the pandemic and that slowed things down but many are touring and everybody there's there is a hunger and a demand for music like what you guys do so i i don't see that i don't see it failing at all i see you know that if you can get out on the road again and this album gets out you're, you're gonna do fine yeah we just need to find that lawyer that lawyer and that Stop manager <laughs> hey you, you need a lawyer and a manager apparently a lawyer so, not putting you on the road so stop. <laughs> yeah i know they're gonna come after this interview matt when they see this interview no, 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 and that big, that big smile on your face you know they're gonna say oh those girls matt those crawler, ladies are cool matt crawler, crawler. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's find the lawyer and the management the rest of the day. <laughs> in that order right yeah. um, you want what? to talk about next week you're talking about today today yeah today. well anything i can do to help i'd be happy to, to to do that and when that album comes out again we'll have to have you on again and we'll talk about about the album the tracks and that beatles song that you're not going to tell us about so oh, yes. well thank you so much this was really great and thank you for reaching out and i i'm really it was really happy to be able to do that video because i i'd like to honor some of the people that i love and some of these groups that just don't get the recognition that they maybe should have had so that was uh, the fact that you reached back out to me was great. I, I had mentioned Lou Courtney earlier, a guy yeah. I loved. Now, he had a Facebook page that was run by, I think, a family member. And I uploaded my video that honored him to that Facebook page, and they wouldn't, they, they, they wouldn't let it up. No. They, wouldn't, they would not let somebody else post on there, even though this is a video honoring Lou Courtney on a Lou Courtney Facebook page. And he was sick at the time. This is pre-COVID. And he died six months later. I don't even think oh, he ever no. saw my video. No, oh, 
that is terrible. So that wow. so he, maybe he did, but I don't think he did. But um, those are the things that we have to fight for. You know, you, you there's all this these people that want to control their space, and yes. they want to be the ones to honor. Yeah. They don't want anybody else honoring them. So I felt that was really sad because he was a guy. Uh -huh. that, and if you check out check out that video on my channel, you may have heard some of his songs. But he he had some great great dance stuff. Totally northern soul. People in England oh, okay, know who he is. Okay, Luke Courtney. But you're doing a good thing, darling, by you know uh, reminding people of different acts. How do we all? <laughs> <laughs> How different acts? You know what you're doing is really really good because oh. there, there's I'm sure that some people uh, this is going to help them probably get back into doing some stuff. You know. Because um, yeah. sometimes you give up, you think, "Oh, it wasn't happening. Nobody knew me." But you're reminding them that you know, it, they're still out possible. there. You're still yeah. out there, and everything is possible to achieve. You know. Yeah, so you're a good guy. You're a good guy. Thank you. Oh, you're Thank quite you. welcome. And, and I'm hoping people will, younger people, will discover this music and purchase it and continue to listen to it and play it in the dance clubs and if there are dance mm. clubs left those are the things i'm trying to do is leave a mark of this music behind because you know i, I want it to be remembered thank Wonderful. you yeah that's thank you. brilliant that's, that's really nice that's a good thing darling thank you you could always have ernest singing oohs and ahs <laughs> 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 Well, thank you so much. How, how, how flattering it was for you to come on. And uh, I really love having you. You were so delightful. Thanks so much again. Thank, Thank you. you so much. It's been a pleasure meeting you, my darling. You take care. Thank you. You too.